Okay. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Alan. Um, I hope you're well. Um, Thank you. Over 43,000 tickets sold so far. It's um, a great occasion. I suppose this is something we want to see on a regular basis, but more importantly, on the pitch on Sunday, how important is the experience of your big-name players, those that have done it in the Euros on the big stage, going to be? Well, yeah, I think it, you know, experience is great to have. You know, we've got uh, a lot of young players as well, so they'll draw on the experience of the elder players. But um, and I think that'll help as well, just to try and normalise things. As much as there's quite a bit of hype around this game, being away from obviously the normal stadium we play in. And again, I think our job has just been to keep things simple, do what we do. We've been playing really well recently. Everyone's really contributing, and. Uh, but also within that, we're, we're really looking forward to the game on Sunday. Well, you couldn't be in better form, could you? Um, confidence plays such a, an important part in, in football. When you've won nine successive games, um, this is the perfect scenario going into this type of game, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think the reasons probably why we've done that is good concentration from the girls. I think focusing on the next game has been the objective and not getting too far ahead. A lot of people were talking about this game, the outside world, and... That's normal because it's, it's something a little bit different. And like you say, the support, the support numbers at the moment look great. And I think it's going to be a great experience for, for everyone involved. Um, but again, yeah, just for us, it's make sure we concentrate on what we can affect and, and try to play the, the game rather than the occasion, if that makes sense. Yeah. Very uh, boring, I know. <laughs> Cliché, but uh, <laughs> quite right. Uh, Laura, um, it's fair to say that you do have a wealth of experience, having been there and done it. You know, you've done the double with Chelsea in the, in the past. Um, what do you make of these sort of occasions where you're playing in front of a, a crowd of 43,000 plus? Yeah, I think it's what we all really look forward to. As soon as this game was at the Etihad and against United as well, it's the perfect, um, yeah, perfect game for it. And we've already been looking forward to it for. Not just me, but everyone in the squad, the young players who, who have been there and done it, everyone's really looking forward to this game. And, and could you tell me a little bit more about the team spirit? Because after those first two defeats of the season where you've had to integrate new players into the squad, how has that come on and benefited you um, coming into these sort of games? I think every week that's gone by we've kind of, um, I don't know, just gelled a little bit more and... Every week we get a little bit more confidence in the way we play and our strengths as a team. And we're going into this in a great place. Nine wins on the bounce. So if it's as good a time as ever to play them. Yeah, we just saw you on the training ground there. There does seem to be a great atmosphere amongst all the, all the players. Yes, it's a um, great atmosphere, great vibe. And yeah, we're in a good place. Thank you. I don't believe any further broadcast on the team, so I believe you want to kick off in the room on the bit. Hi Gareth, you're all right. Yeah, good time. Um, I just wanted to check, like with training today, was there anything specific you've targeted ahead of Manchester United? Not necessarily anything we've not come up against previously. I think with the with the girls, we're always emphasising this is what we expect to see in the opposition. These are their potential threats, but we know that that can can change. Some teams are very set in what they do. For instance, Liverpool have played the way they play the whole season so far. Um, we're probably expecting the same from United, certainly in, in the way they look to press and the way they look to, to play with the ball. So we don't expect anything outside of the ordinary for that. But we always say, and we always train for the what-ifs, and I think the girls at the moment, like Laura said, are in a real good place and everyone has good understanding, good knowledge, good understanding as well of what we do, but also of each other. And the way they work together and the symmetry has been been really good. Even when we make changes in the team, I think the level of performance has been still to a high level. Um, and Laura, like the crowd, roughly, um, United bring a very loud crowd. They've, they've always said that. And you, your guys, like last week, were doing a thunderclap. It was very, very. What's the atmosphere going to be like for you? And how much do you look forward to that? I think I think it's going to be brilliant. And these are the weeks that you really look forward to as a player and the atmosphere home or away against United is always a feisty one I think it always makes the start of the game really good and um, 
yeah, it's just it's going to be a great day, great day for spectators and for us as well. Yeah, Vicky trained fully today, looked really good. Um, so we'll see. I think outside of that, pretty much everyone is is uh, available. Probably really healthy uh, selection choice for us to have. Uh, real good numbers. I think um, that always helps. And, and I think uh, it gives us some good options for the weekend, for sure. Whether that's from the beginning or certainly, I think you've seen the way the modern game is moving towards with five substitutions available. You know, the impact of substitutions is uh, is crucial to any team. Lauren, are you ready to play for the start if, if that's what you want to do? Lauren's fine, yeah. Lauren's fine, yeah. She's, uh, she's in a good place. I think you saw with her performance when she entered the pitch the other night, was really confident, contributed within a couple of minutes of, uh, of an assist for Mary. So, yeah, she's in a good place. He's done. Henry, He's done. <laughs> Dan, are you there? Hello, lady. You there? Yeah, sorry, I was getting a bit of an echo again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing you again, Dan. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we were just talking before myself and Emma. It was Emma's first game after two weeks of being at the club, of, of you know. So she must have thought this is a, a normal thing to happen, and then for it to be sort of three over three years before it happens again. Look, I think it's a, it's a great occasion. I think we're going to go out and do our very best to be as effective as we can be. I think we need to enjoy the experience, regardless of the way the game goes. We're, we're going to try. Uh, we're in good form, good spirits. Um, two good teams going up against each other and like I said previously we just want to try and finish off the year on a on a good note um, obviously we have another game afterwards just before that uh, before the Christmas break but yeah I think it's great to play at the main stadium I think uh, we really enjoy playing at CFA I think you know we've made that a real dominant ground for us I think our, our win percentage there is really really high this is a different experience for us I think um, We'll still look to use the advantage of it being a home fixture, if you like. So, uh, yeah, it's it. You know, whether it's been long overdue before we're back here again is is immaterial, really. Like you say, there's a lot that's happened since with COVID that brought its own problems and issues. So, I think we're just uh, pleased to be here, pleased to see that there's really good numbers, um, and hopefully everyone enjoys the game. Yeah, no, no motivation needed really against United, but yeah, it would be great if we could end the year sort of on level level points with them. And obviously then we're just three points off the top, I think, <laughs> with um, Arsenal. So yeah, it would be really nice to end the year there after, you know, a, a tough start for us. Thank you.
Um, yeah, I think it's I think it's good, and I think it's different to what we've had previously. I would say that I've been to I've been to women's games, whether it be on an international level or club level, and I quite like the interaction between the fans. I think I love the nature of the safety of supporters sitting next to one another. I think it's that's quite a nice atmosphere to be in. Um, slightly more different, obviously, than what we see from from other uh, levels of the game, but. You know, the reasons for it, I'm not too sure. Maybe to create a difference in the atmosphere. But, um, yeah, you know, it's it's what we see on, on the world stage, particularly in the men's game and, and up and down the country. Just that kind of segregation. So, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes, really, to see if it's something that works really well or not. But like I said to you, I thought it was quite interesting to see fans sitting side by side. We've we've exp That's all I've ever experienced, really. Even at Wembley finals, you know, you see... No real segregation for supporters. Um, had it a little bit in the Conti, Conti Cup final down at Wimbledon where it felt like we had one end and Chelsea had quite a lot of the other areas. So, um, yeah, but most of the time we don't really tend to see too much segregation, certainly in WSL fixtures. Um, I don't know, I, ju I just try and um, go into every game having sort of an objective and, you know, it helps when you've got amazing players around you and I just feel like we're really starting to work really well as a team and in our little triangles on the field um, and for me, I'm just taking it all in week by week, trying to learn from my performances and being better the next game. Thank you. Sandra, I believe we've got Graham, who's back now. Graham? Hi, guys. Sorry, I'm going to get the mic on this. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it. Yeah. Um, this weekend's game, obviously, one of the few that I've seen this season where there's been loads of fans packed in. Um, across the Premier League, I think. It wasn't too long ago where Arsenal were discussing there'd be uh, a system where they could play all of the Arsenal women's team at the Emirates. Obviously, things have to change. I think it'd be a good thing. I think obviously it'd be a ground staff's nightmare, but I think it'd be a good thing for uh, for clubs to commit to that. I think Leicester do it, Reading do it as well. Um, they tend to be able to work it somehow. But obviously, like we said previously about demands on players, I think there's a lot of demand on stadiums now. So it's it's pretty full on, and we understand the logistic issues that you have with that. So for us, it's about. Um, it's about kind of sticking with what we know. If that changes anytime soon, then, you know, we'll be it. And, um, you know, regardless of whether we're there every week, every other week at the Etihad, would you expect to see the big crowds that we probably see as more of a one-off? I'm not too sure. But, you know, look, the way the game is going and the way the interest is developing and the success stories more recently, I think it's, um, it's something certainly to look at. so proud it's something you just grow up dreaming about having going to games and having thousands of people watch you it's 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 great and I'm so proud that um, we're up in the attendance so much from 2019 as well um, so yeah it's, it's going in the right direction and hopefully everyone out there can see it's heading in the right direction as well Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Graham. We'll move to Tom Gary on Zoom, please. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Um, I just I wanted to ask a question about the Oscar football because um, yesterday, um, Cam Parsley uh, and the Greater Manchester Mayor, Andy Burnham, were talking about a letter they'd written to every school in Manchester um, calling on them to give girls equal access to football in PE. Um, and I just guess just wanted to get your your take on that, your um, and call on that kind of um, days for, for the sport and, uh, and also just to work the count, you know, a city legend is doing um, in, in the community in that aspect. 
Yeah, I mean, like, short answer for me is it's great. I think it's really necessary and something that we completely back as a club. Um, and then, of course, with Karen, yeah, I think when you have someone of her stature and her, you know, who's had a great career here at the club, who stands for pushing the boundaries for women's football, then there's no greater person really to have to do that. Thank you. Just, just on Manchester United, Gareth, have you been surprised by their form this season? They have only conceded five goals in the eight games. I know they've got some talented players, but have they been better than you expected? I wouldn't necessarily say they've been better than what I expected. They're a, they're a club that's emerging. You know, they, uh, they've managed to retain some of their best players, I think, which was really important. And, uh, yeah, you, you normally see it. I mean, they made a fair challenge last season, and it was kind of not until the end where we actually went past them and we probably had a similar scenario when we played them at the Academy Stadium where we were I think maybe a couple of points behind them and we made a big shift obviously that day by winning um, but you know I think there's a lot of football left to come of uh, they're putting on good displays like you say I think for the first few games of the season they didn't concede started to concede a few more goals more recently um, have probably a better depth of squad now, so they've changed things around a little bit in the Conti Cup as well, um, which didn't obviously the outcome didn't work for them because they've exited the competition so look, I think um, they're emerging and you know, they've, like I say, they've got some good young talent there as well, I think we've seen that and uh, you, you know, I'm not surprised that they're they're up at the top end of the of the division. So just finally then, so follow up to that, do, do you think the league is more competitive now and that, that's the way it will Continue. Yeah, I think it is. I think uh, it's such a you have to be so flawless. I think you know every team's lost this season. You know some teams have lost one game, some lost of two. You've got other clubs that are improving. I think when you only have 22 games in a season, it makes it really competitive, and you have to be pretty flawless. And I think over previous years, maybe the last four or five years, correct me if I'm wrong, but some teams have maybe lost one. We lost one game, I think, in my first season. We still didn't win the league. So it just tells you how tight things are and how the levels of competition and, and clubs are improving for sure. So I think it makes the uh, the league more competitive. And I've always said there are no easy games. There's no games that are won on paper before you play them. You know, a lot of teams now put five five at the back. It makes it so difficult. We've seen that in the World Cup for teams. Teams like Spain struggling to beat Morocco. It's so difficult. Um, which makes the comp competition even harder. Good luck for the weekend. Thank, Thank you. you.